my favorite book is Falso Positivo. It's important to me because this is the first book that I work on uh, Colombian issues, the Colombian violence. I'm from Colombia, and this book confronts a recent uh, mass killing by the Colombian army against the innocent civilians. Before we look at the book, here are some drawings, paintings, and collages I made to illustrate the story of these killings. These ideas gave me a starting point for making the book. In the Colombian army, when a guerrilla fighter is killed, it's called a positive. This book is the story of the falsos positivos, the false positives. Even though this term, falso positivo, is widely use is not accurate because it suggests that the killings were honest mistakes. Los falsos positivos were cold-blooded state-ordered assassinations. For 50 years, there was a war going on in Colombia between the government and the guerrilla groups FARC and ALN. Thousands of people have been killed and displaced over these 50 years. In the early 2000s, the government implemented a plan to make it seem like they were winning the war against the guerrillas. The government inflated statistics about guerrilla fighters that they kill in battle. One of the tactics was offering well-paid jobs to poor young men and boys, but these jobs didn't really exist. When they arrived at the new jobs, far away from home, they were met by Colombian army soldiers who murdered them. The soldiers dressed up their bodies like guerrilla fighters with uniforms, boots, and guns, and counted them as enemies killed in battle. Army soldiers of all ranks participated in these assassinations, and got rewarded with bonuses, promotions, and vacation time. There are 6,402 verified cases of this activity between 2002 and 2008. And this is the drawing that gave me the idea to have the linear format for the book, to tell the story in a linear way. I made this drawing with this line of bodies, and that this drawing made me realize that all the pictures that I have been seeing about falsos positivos in the internet, uh, they have a common de denominator, and the common denominator was a line. Uh, for example, the lines of the soldiers, the lines of the victims next to each other, the lines of the mothers protesting with the signs of their, of their sons. So here is the actual book. I decided to do it in a thin paper. I used Circal 100 grams and I used watercolor with a very limited palette. I also decided to tell the story in a very subtle and minimalistic way. I use these moths because in Colombia folklore, when a moth show up in your house, it's a bad omen. And that means that somebody in your family is going to die. There is a moth hidden in the cover of the book. And it's hidden in, on the camouflage. You can notice this only like turning the book. It depends on the lighting and, the, and turning the book a little bit. And you will see that it's in relief. These are the page of the victims. And I put a deer uh, right there because I wanted to do like a parallel between the predatory hunting of humans and the animals. One of the things that I can understand is sport hunting. That's why I put a deer there. 
Uh, these are the pages of the trees. And I imagine these boys traveling in a bus, seeing these trees passing by. There is an understanding that in Colombia, it's all uh, tropic and it's hot. But there are different climates in Colombia and these uh, trees uh, are different because they are from different climates. This is the lines of soldiers and I, they represent all the ranks in the army. The reason that I include all these uh, different kind of uniforms in the drawings is because uh, this scandal uh, goes from the lowest rank in the army to the higher levels of the, of the army. This is uh, the page of the victims again. And in this uh, page, they had been killed. And I put the deer, also a dead deer, in the middle of the page. They are side by side, like as many times the soldiers uh, put them in mass graves. These pages are the boots that they put on the dead vi victims um, to make them pass as guerrillas. Like guerrillas all use these um, kind of boots because of the territory they are in. And also these boots become almost like a symbol for falsos positivos. There is a lot of stories about how not even when they put the, the boots on the victims, they are not even matching numbers or they are from the same, from the same foot. When you see the news online uh, about this stuff, they always, all, the army always display guns confiscated or found in battle, and they put it side by side for also for the cameras. So I just made a, a line of guns. Some of the guns that they find in these battles against the guerrillas, in this case, false positives are guns that are antiques or are guns that they, they, that they don't even work. When they do the report, they claim that this was the gun, but the bullets that are around the bodies are not even the same bullets that had been shot with that gun. And in those cases, they never even shot that gun. I put this uh, line of ants because Colombia has many kinds of ants and it's like it's something so exuberant to me, like, like it's covered in so many kinds of ants. So I use this because I imagine all these bodies uh, in the very remote uh, uh, parts of Colombia and I just imagine the bodies with the ants. And always making lines. These are the page of the mothers of the victims. They organize themselves in protest and they carry uh, the signs with portraits of the sons, of their sons. And they, uh, in some occasions, dress in white. So this is uh, what I did for this page. I made this page with empty chairs, and I imagine these chairs being in, in the homes of these uh, kill boys, always waiting for them, and they will never return. And this is the text that explains the whole falso positivo. It's at the end, because when all these things are happening, Years after is when they are when they find out what what is what happened to their to their sons. I uh, convert all the O's. I silver leaf them like coins uh, to represent the perverse monetary incentive they give to soldiers to do these killings. The size of the book is 22 inches by 6.5 inches, and it extends to 25 feet 8 inches. It 
He's an accordion. This book is unique. And uh, the book now lives in the Robert B. Haas Family Arts Library at Yale University.